Whatever. Hi, Concrete fans. Today, we're going to make a perfect planter for your succulent. Look at this. Ooh, that's real nice. Let's get right to it. I'm Mr. Concrete Concrete. This is gray matter. This is gray matter. We're gonna make some marbling magic happen. Here we go. Some water. Normally I would tell you to measure your water, but I also think it can be very fun and therapeutic to add water by eye. So that's what I intend to do. real nice. A little more. I'm using a tiny little oval bucket that was once filled with some form of detergent nugget that you put in into some machine to, to wash a thing. I think it was I think it was dishwasher. Dishwasher detergent nuggets. Hmm. Look at this. It's starting to come together. We are going to be doing some marbling, which means we need to think about color. This concrete's starting to really. Look at this. Some dry bits in the back, but. Oh boy, I'm gonna stand up. Things are getting serious. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, we're close. When we get to this consistency, this is very exciting. Mm. Now we can't, we can no longer use the detergent nugget bucket for adding water because it is too, it, it is um, not exact, it, it's not precise. This is when I like to move on to sriracha water. Oh, it's still so, so sriracha, but it's also the perfect bottle for adding water. Look at that. Precise and exact and relatively inexpensive. The cost of this water bottle was one bottle of sriracha worth, I think a bottle of sriracha is five bucks, something around that, somewhere around there. And uh, the other cost was then you eat the sriracha. And then you get this bottle at the end. Bottle for free. Woo! It's a great deal. The, it'll forever smell like sriracha. That smell that never ever goes away. So, if you don't like sriracha, this is a this is a bad deal. Don't get this. Just go buy. You could, you could use a you could use a detergent bottle. Some sort of weird. Like raspberry orchard smell, vanilla bean, orange zest, lemon lime, whatever you want. Look at this coming together. Did you think about color? What we will choose? Scraping out my bucket. This tub came from Ikea. 
Unfortunately, I don't think they make them anymore, but these were, I love, I love them. Too soon. We've got a big old, so I may have made too much concrete. I have, I missed a concrete concrete and I have three molds. I have the small succulent mold. It's just little. I have a larger succulent mold. It's, it's larger and it can hold a succulent. Oh no. Of this size quite easily and it's thriving. Look at all this new growth. Ooh. And just in case, I've got a hexagon tile mold. These are coasters. You make this set of coasters for a loved one, a loved one's special occasion, and you'll, you'll wow them. They'll be like, I've never received anything so beautiful, and you'll be like, I made it myself. Think about that. Final countdown on this concrete. We are going to be marbling. I intend to do a good job of my marbling, which means I need a very specific consistency for my concrete to marble. You know, I don't want to have voids. So if your concrete is a little bit on the wet side, that can help reduce the amount of voids that you will see in a final project. If you want to have a really voidy, if you want to make something that is a ton of voids, maybe we should do that for a project. But if you wanted to, this is not that, but if you wanted to make something with quite a few voids, I would suggest using a very dry concrete mix. But we don't want voids. We want to have really beautiful color strong definition in our uh, This is, oh yes. This is the consistency we're looking for right here. Hmm. Oh. That's real nice. Okay, here we go. The only color I know that I want to make is pink. So we're gonna go start with a little bit of white. That's lots. That I'm going to need red. Now red is a very, very strong pigment, so I would suggest using it sparingly. That's, that'll, that is going to be the perfect amount. Let's get my sriracha water back here. Mm. Pigment can dry out your mix. So I would suggest maybe starting a mix a little wetter. You know what, maybe, no, don't do that. That's risky biz. You can always add a tiny bit of water, but if your mix is too wet too soon, that can be tough to deal with. Here we go. Ooh. And we are coming into color that we want. Oh my goodness. Yep. Yep. Okay. Oh, that's real great. Mm. So this is going to be the lightest color in our mix. I'm going to split this right down the middle. Two more colors. One of these colors is green. 
and grab straight green pigment. This green is a very, ooh, this is gonna be a rich one. That's a lot, that's a lot. So that's a full saturation. I would guess that we hit, that's probably 7%. No, probably not quite 7%. I wouldn't add much more than that. Let's watch and see what we get. Ooh, boy. Oh. Too much water. Oh no, too much water. I should have, okay. Oh shoot, I goofed. Maybe not. Looky, looky. That'll fix it. I'm just gonna fold this in. Oh yeah, that's too wet. Man, I blew it. I, I am so embarrassed. Oh, what a rube. Okay. okay. Coming in. Fixed it. Last color. The last color I want to be black. Or at least, uh, say charcoal. Actually, oh, we'll see what we get. Hmm. Pink's looking good. Got some nice veining in it. This is good. Tempted to add a little bit of water. A tiny, tiny bit of sriracha water. Let's not overdo it like last time. That's lots. That is lots. Shoot. Ooh. But it helps that pigment. Hard. You gotta add some amount of water and get that pigment spread around. Okay. Mm. I like that. My hands are so dirty. Oh, shoot. Shouldn't have added water. There. What is this going to turn out as? That's what I want to know. Hmm. So what do we do? Black charcoal on pink, green. Nugget bucket. Mm. Wipe down. And time for some tools. I got this, this, and this. Yeah, I see. 
see. Oh boy, I made too much concrete, right? I think so. <sighs> That's okay. necessary <sighs> this will have a little bit of air voids you can choose to fill those voids or you can uh, leave them. They're not really gonna affect the structural integrity of the pot in any way. Uh, it's an aesthetic thing. If you don't like them, I would suggest filling them. If, they don't, if you don't think they're a big deal, then leave them. But I'm gonna leave this because the more I vibrate it, and shake it and bump it, the more our marbling starts to blend. And I want it, I want to try to go pretty distinct. That will have, that's gonna have voids, I guarantee it. I can tell by how thick the consistency of the concrete, and I can tell just from vibrating it. It's a wetness thing. But I'll also tell you that that means that you're patterning is going to be really distinct as well so I don't know I think it's worth it doing the little succulent pot now tap it out tap. there's going to be voids Last but not least, I've got our hexagons. Do that like that. Now we're gonna make a stack. made too much. I don't need all this. Chop it. Chop it. Chop. Sit it. Fill the void. But I would also say, who cares? Who cares? I made too much. Who cares? do with all the leftovers. First let's worry about this mold. Looks pretty dry. I think it's going to be just fine. together. Mm. Tap it out. Should be good. And the leftovers. Let's bring them together. Put it into something, right? Leave it. I feel like I need to uh, do 
something productive with it. Check out the big one. <clears throat> so it's a pretty clean pour. I don't have to, don't have to clean the edge. I can just start separating. Now, this time I'm going to stand up because I need to actually flex down the edge of the table a bit. There we go. Feels like it's released. Let's just start pulling. You want to be careful not to have it pop out and fall on the ground. Oh. What do you think of this one? We can, we can put a, a beautiful succulent or cactus in here. If you wanted to, you could drill a hole in the bottom for drainage. For most cactus and succulents, shouldn't be too necessary if you're careful with watering, but you could as a just in case precaution and have it drain out into a dish. But I think this is fine just like this. Beautiful. Nice clean edges, not too bad on voids. If we wanted to, we could fill a couple of the big voids, but I like how that looks. Let's take a look at our hexagon tiles. These ones I feel are gonna be voidy. I think our mix was pretty dry by this point. little set. Make so many little hexagons that you decide to tile your bathroom or kitchen or your entire house. Whatever you want to do. Last but not least we've got can. Can thing. I'm going to try to just peel the aluminum. Hmm. Ew. Some of the co 
concrete has folded over the edge of our aluminum. Gotta make this tough. Ah. Ah, can thing. I shouldn't I shouldn't have overfilled this. down the side. Okay. There we go. So sometimes you end up with a little bit of excess concrete. You don't know what to do with it. And you can, uh, you could just let it sit and dry out and then throw it in the garbage after or take it to your local recycling, concrete recycling plant, although they're probably more interested in recycling tons and tons of concrete, not a little handful, but you could be diligent and, and take it there. But I say if you've got a little bit of excess, try to do something. There we go. Oh, this didn't work at all. Kind of worked. The whole edge broke out, bonded in. Probably will still end up recycling that. But who cares about this? Because we've got this. And this, and this. So, thanks for sticking around with me while we made these beautiful marbled succulent planters and coaster hexagon. Hope to see you again. Goodbye. Oh, whatever.